How many of you had an economics course sometime during your life? Most people. Almost everybody. So you remember the way that course is taught is there are these economic agents. Uh, in Latin, it's homo economicus. Uh, and these economic agents are really smart. Uh, they have no emotions, and they don't care about anybody else. Um, and the idea, the humans versus econs, the idea is that th I call these people econs, the people you only read about in economics textbooks. Uh, and my claim is that they don't exist. Um, when I was lucky enough to win the Nobel Prize two years ago, there's a toast I had to give at the banquet. And my toast was that my great discovery was discovering human life in a place where it was thought not to exist, which was the economy. <laughs> and that's really the essential insight of behavioral economics which is we don't have these robots. We don't have a world of bots. Uh, they may be around the internet more than we suspected, but they, uh, they're, they're not consumers and investors and traders and even and CEOs are human, and which means they're uh, imperfect and uh, emotional and uh, expectations can be biased and influenced by all kinds of things. And that makes the world way more interesting. Well, they gave, they gave yesterday the Nobel Prize to three great economists. And, and as we were talking about, in a way they do behavioral economics. Oh, absolutely. So if, if you weren't clinging to this news, economists, this is you know, the most interesting day of the year. It was given to three economists, and together they are responsible, along with hundreds of others, but they're the leaders, in uh, creating a style of research of doing randomized control trials in poor countries. You and had that in medicine, right? You we, had that yeah, for drugs? I mean, and uh, so we've been doing that. Um, for drugs in, for many years. Uh, there's no way to know whether a medicine works or doesn't uh, unless there's a control group that gets a placebo. And the reason for that is most of the time, no matter what's wrong with you, you get better. And uh, that's why the species existed before we had pharmaceutical companies. Let me describe one of the experiments. The question was, why didn't peasant farmers in India use enough fertilizer on their farms? Now think about an, an economic analysis of this. Well, we say people are rational, uh, farmers are business persons, and they will use the optimal amount of fertilizer. That is the theory of the firm that you learned in school. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue, and everybody produces in the most efficient way possible. So it turns out most farmers were not using nearly enough fertilizer, and they could almost double their income by spending a couple dollars on fertilizer, and they weren't doing it. And they tried various ways to get them to do it, lowering the price and so forth and so on. The thing that worked used my favorite uh, behavioral tool, which is make it easy. And uh, the best time to intervene was right after the harvest, which is because that's when they have money. And the intervention was free delivery which, by the way, has met Jeff Bezos, a very yeah. rich man. So they, they offered fertilizer prime and uh, free delivery. And that, I don't remember the exact results, but basically it increased income by about 50%. So, you know, again, the economic theory says this will have no effect. It's a trivial effect. 
Mount. And because they're already doing everything perfectly. And uh, anyway, it's a beautiful little experiment. And this is how one experiment at a time, we're starting to learn some lessons about how we can lift people out of poverty.